uh, we really is by accident. We find the tryptophan is a good solvation. It's really we not intend to tryptophan. That time we do energy transfer in the local reduction. Uh, we really uh, by accident. Uh, for other group uh, from here, even uh, early days, and then this is also doing by external labeling. Basically, you put a dye in the protein, and very soon people find that this is not a plant. Because number one, you break the local equivalent. Number two, you couldn't label it any place you want. So it's really destroyed. And we really also uh, appreciate that Stephen Box uh, uh, collaborated with, uh, with uh, uh, San Francisco uh, Medical School to the uh, uh, you know, artificial amino acids, try to understand the, understand the, the electrostatics. Yeah. So, uh, Chitong is a very, very tricky system. It's, a, it's a misunderstood in the literature for a long time. And then, number one, uh, Chitong is not easy because it's a multiple life time. Even in the water alone, you can make it at least as a two life time, which I never believe it. I believe it's a heterogeneity. It's a dynamic heterogeneity. But you can see in the literature, people, everybody say Chitong has no common. But it's okay. You know, you can divide uh, you know, tryptophan in the two, one is this one, one is this one, you know, one is three nanosecond, one is 500 picker. Same as the Adam's uh, question, uh, for peptide, it's very mobile, actually very dynamic, you know. We simulated five peptide, five residue peptide, we found a lots of structure in the same energy. So we believe in the water, this peptide is very mobile. Same as tryptophan, even one residue, you can hang in there this way and that way, for, for this configuration, you have electron transfer. For this configuration, you have proton transfer. So that's why it calls the uh, two lifetime you measure uh, in, in the, in, for tryptophan molecule. And then uh, in the protein, you couldn't do any proton transfer, but you have two peptide bonds uh, nearby. So that when tryptophan is hanging there, you still have electron uh, transfer with peptide. So that's why barely one out of thousand probably proteins, even though protein has a single tryptophan, you never get a single lifetime because it's a peptide, you know, dynamic heterogeneity. So you have a quenching issue. So that's a uh, difficult. Think about if you have chromophore, you have two lifetimes at least, maybe more. And then also people know the emission, different lifetimes have different emission. So you can think about it. Even without solvation, the emission spectrum also shifts with time, which is not a solvation at all. It is the emission, increasingly emission. So it's the tricky. Also, in the early days, it has also had an LA, LB business. So people say, well, forget it. This triple is uh, very, very uh, nasty. So, can I ask a question? I know we yeah. to but yeah, go on. Yeah. Some of it confused again. Um, so what do you mean by electron transfer from the tryptophan to the amide bond? Are we talking energy transfer or are we talking... No, electron, electron transfer, transfer. sorry. So, ET so is the electron transfer. So yeah. where does the electron go? Uh, well, actually it's uh, with this one, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, peptide. So what this is, is the electron can transfer to the peptide bond. Yeah. You mean the photo yeah. excitation? Or, or, or yeah, just the way we do excitation. After we do excitation, and then you have the electron transfer with the peptide bond. Yeah. yeah. So you form a dimeradical. Yeah, and they'll probably wear back again. Right. You know what I mean? That could be back in junction forward, could excite state, and a backward ground state. So you become cycle, yeah. So this is also recently, uh, Pat uh, uh, carries in the Montana state, there's a lot of calculation on the tryptophan. And then you have transfer states here. So that's why it costs maybe multiple other times. So this is uh, all this uh, issue. So this is take a famous Samuel Foster paper, a uh, chemical review, you know, and then typical solvation, right? So you have in the ground state, you excite this, and then, uh, you know, uh, you look at the water relaxation in, in the lab, if you have a per second, you can catch each emission, then you basically can map out the environment response. So that's a typical uh, experiment that uh, everybody do. So this is uh, uh, we did at Caltech at that time with Samir Paul we together. So we look at the tryptophan in water. You can see uh, blue side you see beautiful decay, red side you see rise. So this is a typical uh, solvation signature. Uh, of course, we did also uh, wavelength dependence. This is not a variation. Right? 
And in the older days, in literature, people only monitor 340, 320. So the attribute that this is the LA, LB states, which is not true. But anyway, uh, just a short, shorter form is an excellent uh, uh, problem. So we also figure out how to do different uh, lifetime, and uh, you can construct the time correlation. It's not a, it's not a straightforward. It's not a die. If you only have one wavelength, one lifetime, one emission peak, uh, it's straightforward. But for triple phone, you have different lifetime, how you subtract the lifetime emission shift from the overall stock shift, and you can check the time zone stock. So that's a uh, we can put in the form. So uh, here, in the, uh, uh, some uh, you know, uh, uh, general description. So for protein, because the surface is, a ho is not a homogeneous, so we need to look at the water structure or water dynamics globally. So even though for this three collapse, you will see for sure water is different. Even though this tail, if tail is mobile, so water dynamics are also different. So uh, for past several years, we spent uh, probably I spent fifty percent of my effort trying to mapping out this global water motion along the long curve. So that's what we did uh, uh, experiment in the uh, three, uh, three, four years. So basically, in my lab, we do these three things together. Number one, you need to use molecular biology. So you need to take one protein, you do mutation globally. So could I show you very soon? We take one protein, actually, it's the apple microbe. We mutate the 40 mutants globally from A, B, C, D, E, H, H. So uh, you need to lots of molecular biology technique to manipulate the protein. And then you do femto second study. Also, we have two students full time doing large scale MD simulation and they get an insight. So this is a uh, this is a protein we use. This is a, actually it's a microbe, uh, which already have simulation for residence time in the literature. So we design more than forty mutants, which is yellow spot, and then we first the screen. because when the phone if not design why they will punch with labeling residues which is not a opt good optical problem. So you want to pick a pro trip the phone, which is a nanosecond lifetime. You want to make sure this is an excellent optical problem, and then you can do study. So that's what we design. From the 40 mutants, we only get 15 is good, roughly, and then actually 15 or 16, and a half mutant, it is quenching by surface. It's not a nanosecond. So we get rid of this. So we only take 15 mutants in the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, Hennig, and then we do the uh, salvation. So first, we design mutant, we need a screen, and also we need to examine the pro protein integrity, right? Protein fold, or the fold right? You know, you need to check all these things. And then we did the two uh, states. One is the native state at pH 6. The people well known in the literature, if you, mute, if you change the pH equal 4, apple microbe is a stable modern global state. So also we did a modern global state to compare what's different and the water or protein structure uh, at a different, uh, you know, different pH. And also we did a temperature dependence. So because uh, uh, the hydrogen network uh, may uh, show very different temperature dependence than the free one. So that's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it takes three, four years. So here I show the one point, the W7, protein has two tryptophan. So we mutate one out, and we show W7, this is a pH 6 data, this is a pH 4 data. And then you use the methodology we, we develop, you can construct the correlation function. And then you will see, not too much different at this point. And the W7, you will see native state is this, and the modern global state is this. And again, show that again, again, if you simulate this uh, correlation function, you will simulate, uh, you can simulate it by double expansion. Basically, a few picosecond and the 10th picosecond, which is a Samir Paul did uh, many system, it's a similar. So here, you didn't see too much different. If you look at another point, uh, 104 position, you will see native states and model groups is a way different. So here, you get a lots of information. So by doing this 15, 16 mutants in the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Hennessy's, and you change the native states and the, the monotropic states, you get lots of the information. So you get lots of correlation. For example, if surface is a chart, you know, what's the time scale? If surface is hydrophobic, what's the time scale? And if surface is a convex and a con concave, what's the, uh, all different? 
So we got a whole map of the data we just finished analyzing, spent one year to graduate student. So we got a complete map of the hydration on the protein surface. So uh, we are working on some paper right now. So, uh, you know, uh, well, you know, bottom line is, uh, we get a double expansion, but it's time scale on the map everywhere. You know, first compo component, it is a few picosecond. <coughs> Second component could be 20 picosecond, could be 200 picosecond. Depends on your local structure, chemical identity, which I will uh, summarize very soon. So we take this opportunity, we did several other systems. For example, we look at the peptide, go to the different alpha helix, and we did uh, this uh, uh, you know, human serum uh, algorithm. Uh, we look at the correlation structure with water, even we probe the uh, water on the uh, liquid surface. So we can anchor our probe in the different layer, so we can look at the water, what's uh, done. Recently, we even go bigger, we did this uh, I DNA polymerase, and look at active side, how water uh, mobility to the, you know, uh, to the DNA synthesis. So uh, recently we, we did all this system. So last thing, this is a truly, truly important question. I am sure many people will uh, ask this. When we give talk, everybody asks, say, how do you differentiate contribution and the water and the protein? Which is a big, bigger question. Only days when I know the proposal, all the review is about this. How to differentiate? Is a couple, how can I differentiate? So here I just show you one system. Recently we did two systems. So this is a stuff nucleus. And I guess uh, I'm sure some people uh, saw this type of PNS uh, uh, later last year. So this protein has one crystal form. All that this triple one has three charges. It's a three charge wrapped on the triple film. So if we do mutation one by one, you find out, number one, emission no change at all for fluorescence. So first, first conclusion is the stock shift is no change. If we try this significant contribution, you will see significant change. And this is already solved by the X-ray structure. Structure didn't perturb too much. This mutant already solved by X-ray structure, the structure. So uh, number one, uh, the stock shift at least from fluorescence, no change at all. And if you look at the dynamics, you will see basically similar. You know, all these mutants, you will see basically similar. You know, of course you were different because you changed the charge, you know, you were different. But overall it's similar. So at least for this system, also we recently did another zero reduction, it's hydrophobic. This is a charge. Another we did hydrophobic. And we found out all the structure flow, no much change. Number one, number two, uh, all the dynamics, time behavior, no much change. So this uh, makes us believe, to some extent, at least for this system, that all the response is from the water. It's not from protein too much. Maybe protein is a minor. Uh, this is our conclusion. So uh, that's why people say, how do you say it's hydration? How do you say it's protein solvation? So now we, we're back to this. We, we spent three, two or three years did a simulation, which we didn't publish too much. Uh, last week we have Jack's paper finally out. And then we did a linear response. And this is a long equivalent, uh, equivalent, non equivalent uh, result. So this is by uh, taking the X ray structure and in the water, room temperature equivalent for 20 nanoseconds. And then we did a linear response. You can see, for we, we find out in this even 20 nanoseconds, Protein can be in the two isomers. So actually, flow use the amber or charm or blue max. And actually, the protein can be in the two isomers. Even we believe if we submit longer, there are more isomers. So we take one case here, I'll show you, isomer one. For isomer one, and for W7 position, you can see protein overall contribution is really very small. Besides the initial drop. And if you look at the water, you have you know, a few picosecond, and if you submit it longer, longer, you have long component. This is a total. So total means water plus protein. This is a linear response. Uh, uh, and then look at the excited lung equivalent result. You will see protein similar as this uh, linear response. You see the water has decayed. But uh, however, there's a several significant uh, difference. Number one, 
No matter what the fossil fuel that we use, we see a 50 or 80 percent is very fast job, which is in frames per second. Is in the 100 frames per second or in the 80 uh, or 50 frames per second. It's extremely job, which in the free water people attribute that this is uh, you know inertia motion or, or, or you know uh, uh, damp the rotation all operation. But uh, same thing in protein, we also see this simulation. However, from more than 60 system reasons we did, we didn't see at all in protein. So we truly believe what in the protein surface either is a high polarized or is a high strong hydrogen networking. So what we are not do that fast motion. I, you know, uh, you know, uh, last year I had one conference talk to David Hayes, you know, uh, uh, Amber, uh, father, one of father. So uh, he said. Uh, I show the data to uh, David. I say, you know, no matter what we do, you we obviously dominant is a faster uh, job by MD simulation. And uh, and uh, and his answer to me, they have two possibilities. He said, number one, when build is supposed to fuel whatever, uh, we really low pass at this time scale, so we take us granted. Number two, he said, that in the simulation, maybe. Your structure is not is different from the expanding structure because you take the X-ray structure, you warm up and the low room temperature equivalent. So it may not be enough. But from my point of view, from all the system we did, you know, including some we have all the results that you include. Right now we have more than fifty points or sixty uh, points different proteins. We never see fast decay. We only see one system extremely fast decay is five hundred five percent. All other proteins show picosecond. So uh, one thing uh, people will say, the water model is not good enough. Right? Now, now you see the literature, people say, in the pro on protein surface, uh, you definitely you need to put a plus ability inside. Otherwise, it's not good. Which we use SPC, ESPC, tps 3 p We use all the water model, all the force field. And then, we no matter what we do, even we use quantum, right now we do quantum. So all see this. So uh, this is a really big challenge. You know, I don't know what's going on actually. Uh, way different from experiment, from the simulation. Okay. You're almost done. Okay. So last, uh, last one. Yeah. Okay. So I just summarize here. Okay. So and then uh, really is a, a two. Uh, forget all the other thing. It's a, a two times scale. So I just try to understand, uh, tell you what's the times that we believe right now uh, from the MD simulation from the other system. So the first time scale is the same as uh, 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 older believing. So that means the water let walk into liberation or rotation from empty simulation from our system is the same thing. So this is a take a few picosecond. It's slow than the free water by one order. In the free water is 100 frames per second or 50 uh, frames per second. In the pro protein surface is a picosecond. So this is no much larger translation of motion. And the second component, I said it could be 10 picosecond, could be 100 picosecond. Actually, it's very interesting, which I believe is a biological relevant. So we believe right now, this time scale has a two process, convert the two together. One is in and out, less than the time, because the water always dynamic equivalent with the outside. Another is the water large translation motion on the protein surface. Think about this. In the ground state, that your water like this, right? You suddenly change the dipole, you want to water a range to new dipole. So from the low, from ground state equivalent, you need to go to excessive equivalent. You have to do large translation motion under your arrangement. This is to take a tenth picosecond. And this time also coupled with protein fluctuation. For example, if we follow the protein, this no component immediately disappears. However, rest of the time is still there, in and out is still there. But what it just couldn't do is, if we flow the protein then this simulation. So this time we believe is truly for first time look at protein water coupling mode fluctuation time. So your water move a little bit, your protein fluctuates a little bit, your water move a little bit of protein uh, fluctuates a little bit. And finally reach the new equivalent in the excited state. So this time also convolute the water in and out. It's a dynamic convolution between on the protein surface translational motion time plus your distal motion in and out mode. You can call transverse or longitudinal. So couple them together. So this will take a 10 speed 
this coupling heavily rely on the protein structure. So from the 60 points from the mapping, we get a beautiful correlation. If this tertiary structure very good, this time take longer. If it is the alpha helix loop, and this time is very faster because this is coupling motion. So that's basically spotting. So finally, I just sent the students did work. Actually, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so only this I post saw when we knew. Right now, he he is in the Princeton uh, senior scientist, a permanent senior scientist actually. And then, and uh, for the hydration, most uh, did about Ya Ping Gao, and uh, from Taiwan, Wei Hongqiu from China, mainland China, and then Yi Yuan Zhang from mainland China, also Yi Yang mainland China. I have two wonderful students, very bright students, Andy Castanelli, and also Tammy Lee. Uh, this is uh, uh, Andy here, and then this is uh, uh, Tammy Lee. Uh, do full time MD simulation, and then for water, we, uh, we have uh, general interest with Ahmed uh, at Caltech. And MD simulation came out uh, with collaboration with our uh, uh, you know, partner chemistry theory uh, in the uh, chemistry department of Ohio State, Shuing Singer. And for NIPID work, we collaborate with Martin Caffrey. Uh, right now, he moved to uh, Scotland. Oh, Ireland. Uh, Ireland. Oh, Ireland, sorry, sorry. That was a big mistake. You were told him, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, Ireland, that's right. <laughs> So, uh, funding by uh, National Science, ma mainly by National Science Foundation and the PAC Foundation. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, questions? Oh, can, can you go back to this diagram that you had up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This is a real post diagram, you think? So, yeah. Yeah. so there's yeah. a little web <laughs> that you talked about. There's a nice review that um, yeah. Samir wrote in Chemical Reviews that's in here and has some of the same uh, pictures. So. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yeah. So, this physical picture clearly <coughs> underlies all your interpretation of the experiment. But it's a physical picture in which the motion along the excited state is, is very heavily damped yeah. uh, by friction into the solvent. That's so, right. So, do you ever work in the regime where the motion in the excited state is simple harmonic oscillation backwards and forwards? And do you know anything about the intermediate zone? Uh, yeah, you mean this diagram here? This is looking at the in 